Over 60% of those formerly incarcerated remain unemployed a full year after their release. And of those who do find employment, they're likely to earn 40% less than before their incarceration. Let's take a look at some efforts to help these individuals reach their full economic potential. Thank you all so much for being with us. Daniel, let me start with you. Let's talk about the challenges to reentry that our neighbors in North Carolina are facing. Okay. Uh, so right now, there are estimated 2 million people in North Carolina with a criminal record. And when I say a criminal record, I'm not just talking about a felony conviction or a misdemeanor conviction, because anytime someone is charged with a crime, unless that record is expunged, it stays on the record. And so every time an employer, a landlord, um, an educational missions officer looks at that, they see the entire criminal record. And so, um, and generally what the experiences of many individuals, whether they're coming out of prison, coming off of probation, um, or coming out of a diversionary program uh, where their charge was dismissed, is when they check that box or um, that decision maker runs their record, uh, that that opportunity is foreclosed to them. Um, and again, whether you're talking about um, uh, a gainful employment, affordable housing, uh, these are the essential opportunities and resources uh, for prosperous citizenship. And so um, these barriers have become so uh, heightened uh, these days uh, that it really isolates pe people from these opportunities. And so what we've seen is that it facilitates a revolving door criminal justice system that is extremely costly, not only in terms of uh, the human cost on both those individuals um, and their families, Families, but also undermines uh, public safety and generally sends people back to prison, which is uh, very expensive. And so there has been an effort uh, over the last, I would say, 10 years uh, across, by policymakers, but also uh, government agencies and advocates to really try to uh, uh, fix this system and really try to give people an opportunity when they come out to make, you know, to, to um, make a life for themselves and for their families. So let me turn to Nicole for a second, because I think this public safety issue mm -hmm. is one that people will find interesting. Expound a little bit on how we're undermining our very interest in protecting the public through our system as it stands today. Absolutely. The challenge to public safety is if individuals who are released from incarceration, those who are um, have a criminal background, uh, if they don't have the opportunity to move forward in their lives, to take care of their families, to gain, get become gainfully employed, get housing, uh, and just simply just move forward as a citizen, it becomes a public safety issue, both, both for our communities and, as Daniel mentioned, uh, it becomes very costly to the criminal justice system. Vanessa, let's, let's talk about the cost to individuals and the cost to their families and the cost to communities for a second. We're talking about 20% of North Carolina's population. What does this all add, add up to? Well, when you think about someone being incarcerated just for one day, it's about $96 per day. And then if you, for that one individual for the year, it's over $35,000. So that is a pull on our economy. If that same person uh, gets out on the other end and then is able to get, say, a minimum wage job of $7.25, then they're making about $15 thousand a year, but then they can contribute to the state and federal taxes, which is uh, coming back into our economy. And so to not address the betterment of their education and their employment opportunities definitely puts a strain on, on the economy because they are not ready to work once they are out.